Olá e bem-vindos ao prêmio de ferramenta mais legal, The Coolest Tool Award. Namaste. Coolest Tool Award mein aapka swagat hai. Ao vivo ao redor do mundo. Dunia bhar se seedha prasaran. Estamos aqui hoje para celebrar o trabalho da incrível comunidade técnica do Wikimedia. Essa é a terceira edição do Tool Award. Uma ferramenta dentro da definição de Coolest Tool Award é um software no ecossistema da Wikimedia que é útil do seu ponto de vista. Alguns exemplos de ferramentas são que is hai. Gadget, extensões MediaWik, sites Gadget, e serviços da Media Wiki Extension, APIs, aplicativos móveis, aplicativos de desktop, API, bots, mobile application, pos, desktop scripts application, de usuário e etc. Bot or user script. Temos milhares de ótimas ferramentas. Hoje celebramos apenas algumas delas. Todo ano, os prêmios são baseados nas recomendações da comunidade do Wikimedia. Obrigada a todos pelas nominações. Nós já sabemos, mas é válido repetir. Software livre e código aberto, free and open source, é sobre a contribuição de muitos. Free or open source, कई लोगों के योगदान के बारे में Hoje celebramos as ferramentas legais e as pessoas incríveis por trás delas. आज हम शानदार टूल और टूल के पीछे के शानदार लोगों का जश्न मनाएंगे. Desenvolvedores de software e pessoas que contribuem com as traduções, problemas de relatório, mostrar a terceiros como usar ferramentas ou simplesmente contar que as ferramentas existem, escrever documentações e criar logos legais. Developer or maintainer वे लोग जो अनुवाद में मदद करते हैं बग रिपोर्ट करते हैं दूसरों को टूल का उपयोग सिखाते हैं प्रलेखन लिखते हैं और शानदार लोगो बनाते हैं Se você já fez algo do tipo para qualquer uma das ferramentas que hoje apresentamos, esse prêmio é seu também. यदि आपने आज हमारे द्वारा प्रदर्शित किए जा रहे किसी भी टूल के लिए ऐसा कुछ किया है तो यह पुरस्कार आपके लिए ओके वंश कमेसा अच्छा जी चलिए शुरू करते Wikishootme is one of my favorite wiki tools. It's one of the classics from Magnus Manskin, and I'm delighted to recognize it as a coolest tool. At the basic level, Wikishootme is a simple, easy to use map that shows which geographical points of interest have photos and which don't. 
each Wikipedia article or Wikidata item that has geographical coordinates will show up. If it's green, it has a photo, and if it's red, it doesn't. It also shows blue dots, which are photos from commons that have camera location data. I love to use it both when I'm at home and when I'm traveling to set missions for myself. Earlier, I decided to find this place, the Luther Memorial Lutheran Church, and take a good photo of it. And now that I've got a photo, I can use WikiShootMe to upload it and add it automatically to Wikidata. I just authorize it for my account. And then when I click on it, I can upload the image. And it will automatically put it on Commons and also add an image statement to the Wikidata item. So now the Wikidata item includes the image statement with the photo I just uploaded. WikiShootMe is also a handy tool to spot geocoding errors. You may see a dot, like this one that I spotted earlier, that seems out of place. Is this pharmaceutical company, which Wikidata says is a company in Kirkland, Washington, really located in the middle of this residential area in Seattle? No, it turns out that's a mistake, so I'm going to go fix the coordinates on Wikidata. And now, if I reload Wiki, shoot me, it should be gone in a moment. All better. WikiShootMe is a powerful, fun tool, and well-deserving of this year's Coolest Tool Award. Hi, this is Quarry Tool. It has been developed by UV Panda user. So this tool allows you to run SQL queries on any Wikimedia data, public database through your browser. So first you need to go on this tool with the URL query.wmcloud.org. And then there will be the option of login with Wikimedia. Once you will click on that, you will be redirect to Wikimedia, Media Wiki site and there you need to allow this tool to get authorized. Once you will authorize this tool, you will be get login. Like here, you can see your uh, my username. So instead, you will see your username here. So simply after getting uh, coming to home screen, click on new query. So this will provide you the interface where you can uh, enter the 
db name so just click on here and select any db like i am selecting english wiki and then here is a text box which allow you to write sql query and run it so i am writing a simple query So once you write the query in this text box, you just need to click on submit query. So as you can see that the query status has been completed and we can see the result. So I have currently 294 addresses on English Wikipedia, which can be seen here. The query will remain the same. You just need to be change the database if you want to run this for different wiki like if I run it for Hindi wiki and I submit the query again, so you can see here on my native Wikipedia, I have 10,961 edits. Thank you. is going on because you watch wiki pages. But you do that on many wikis. So many watch lists to check. But there is a solution. Go to your watch list on Meta and select Global Watch List. Add the wikis that you are most active on. Now enjoy all changes on all your watch lists on one single page. Never again miss a change that you really wanted to revert. Or just mark everything as seen because you're sometimes overwhelmed like me. Global watch list. Thanks. <laughs> of content in all Wikimedia projects, including biographies on Wikipedia, are about women. We know this statistic thanks to our this year's winner of Coolest Tool Award in Diversity category, Humaniki. Humaniki is a merger of two previous data diversity tools, Wikidata Human Gender Indicators, as known as 
W-A-T-I and the Nolis. Humaniki is a tool that allows us to explore the gender gap in Wikimedia projects by several dimensions, such as country, projects, date of birth. Let's use it together. Under Visualization Collection, we see by country, by project, by date of birth visualizations. For example, let's see gender by Wikimedia project. I think we can also say by language graph. Here we see in Spanish Wikipedia more than 20-20% of biographies are belongs to women. Then Commons and English Wikipedia follows it. This is a great information because it shows what projects like Women in Red should focus. And it also displays which projects have nicer statistics, which means have successful strategies for diversity, so that other projects can do the same, the successful strategy. And let's check the frequently asked questions I interested with roadmap. Currently the alpha stage of the project is completed, which includes several features like merging capabilities of WHGI and Denoles and customizable visualizations by enabling filter search. In beta stage, some even more interesting features are waiting us, like gender gap evaluation trends or internationalization to adapt software to different languages. So this already super cool tool is also a rising star. As not all languages are yet in Humaniki, people with other languages than the ones currently supported in Humaniki can still see the knowledge with older data. Another great news is gender by occupation metrics will be added to Humaniki in beta, which is currently available in the knowledge. This also gives opportunity to organize occupation targeted editathons. Also, I personally find it great that it uses previously created tools to make a stronger tool. Thanks a lot to contributors for creating a solution for such a critical problem. Depictor, from prolific toolmaker Hai Kranen, is a sweet new tool that makes it easy and fun to add depict statements to Wikimedia Commons. Trying it out is delightfully simple. Go to hi.toolforge.org slash depictor, log in via OAuth, and you're ready to start. By default, it will find a Commons category for a person who has a corresponding Wikidata item and also some images that lack depict statements. The category is a strong hint that these are images of the person, so for each image you simply figure out whether that person is pictured in the image. If they are, you click Yes, and it will automatically use your account to add a depict statement. Click No, and the tool will remember that this particular image doesn't depict the person whose category it's in. And if you're not sure, you can just click skip. With a little bit of investigation, you can usually figure out even the trickier ones. 
but the Pictor is also very mobile friendly for when you just want to do a bit of light data curation. You can mark the obvious ones and skip the rest while you're riding the bus or queuing at the stroke waffle shop. Since it was launched in 2021, Depictor has already been used to add about 200,000 Depict statements to Commons. And Hai himself recently made a wonderful video to show off both the basic features and several more advanced ones, like using Depictor in conjunction with PetScan or Sparkle queries. If Depictor sounds like something you'd like to try, I highly recommend watching Hai's video, and you'll get to know him a bit along the way. Congrats to Hai and Depictor for winning one of this year's Coolest Tool Awards. Hi, this is diff edit user script that allow users to edit text in diff mode. It is created by John Harald. So let's look at how we, we can use that on our wiki. So first you need to be go on a wiki where you want to enable this get this user script and go in the search bath and type your username with user prefix. And after that, just put common dot JS. It is a pair where you can put your uh, put JavaScript code to run under your user namespace. Just you need to be copy this text and put that text here and just click on publish changes. Now, if you go any diff, so you, you will get a one edit button here. So you need to just click on this edit button and this all the text is editable. So now you, you need to change what you want. Like rand, I am changing random and to and me. After changing all these things, it is optional to give some added summary. and just click on publish changes. Now you can see that the script has added the page for us.
So let's talk about convenience discussions now. Um, Wikitalk pages or the discussion pages are where you go to discuss the main content of a page. These discussion pages can get really long and sometimes even messy, making it hard to follow the winding conversations that editors write. And when the discussion page is very active, it becomes almost impossible to edit it without encountering some edit conflict. Enter convenient discussions. Um, by installing the simple user script in your commons.js or your global.js on Meta, for example, these problems can go away. So you get a you get a you get a redesigned talk page with author and dates displayed. Um, you know, on top of the comments, you are able to simply thank and edit that added a comment. You can reply to a comment or add a subsection underneath an existing main section or even add a new topic or subject headline altogether. So you won't have to read talk pages through diffs anymore if you have convenient discussions installed and you can opt in for desktop notifications about you know, replies to user comments. So go and give it a try. Thank you. Alice, when will we meet again? It's complicated. Could you set up a Voodala for us? Voodala, a tool to ask several people in a poll. Let's schedule an event. Enter a title and a description. Add the dates and times to choose from. Then review and confirm the options to create the poll. Copy the public link to the poll and share it with your fellow Wikimedians, for example via email. In the votes section, enter when you will have time, when you could make it possibly, and when you will not have time. Wait for the other people to do the same. Select the time when most people can make it and share it with the others. You don't want to talk to people? You can also create a simple poll. Enter the available options. Again, review and confirm the options. Copy the public link to the poll, share it, and wait for the others to add their votes. Well, that was easy. Thank you, Alice. Bob, better thank Woodle.
Hi, so this is the POS tool. So POS tool is nothing but a Jupyter implementation for Wikimedia site. So as you can see that a Jupyter notebook is a popular open source tool that allow user to create, share document that contains live code. So it is mostly used for Python code. So in by this tool, you can run terminal and create a notebook which contains Python code and it you can run it. So first you need to just click on a launch pause. So it will re redirect you to this site hub.pause.wmcloud.org. So here you can see that there is a button for sign in. You just need to click on this sign in button. It will ask you some permission to authorize this tool. So you just need to click on allow. So with this way, you can log in on the POS with your Wikimedia account. So as you can see that I am now currently logged in. You can see here the logout button. So now here you, you can do too many things with it. Like you can create a bash notebook, Python 3 notebook and Sparkle and R. Other things are like terminal. So for this example, I am opening the terminal for to show the demo. So one more thing is that in Wikimedia, the in terminal, PyWikiBot is already integrated with it. So here I just need to type pwv.py login. So you don't need to be create a user hyphen config.py file. It automatically take your credential. As you can see that I am already logged in here. So now I will edit a page with the script with PyWiki bot. So I'm writing simple add text. I'm running a add text script. Hello from POS. As you can see that it prompt me a option what you, what I want like do you do I want to accept this change or ignore this change or quit from the changes. So I am satisfying with my edit. So I just click y for i just type y for yes and just enter so now you can see that the successfully has the script has been successfully terminated by reading a one page and writing one page so let's see what it did so if you see here that hello from pause which we write here to use us to add this text by the script. So th this is the one way to use pause through the terminal. And second way is that you can create a Python 3 notebook and you can run the code line by line.
User The Earwig has been working on Wikipedia maintenance and admin tasks for well over a decade now, and an area where he's had enormous impact is tools for detecting copyright violations. We're recognizing Earwig's CopyVio detector for this year's Coolest Tool Egg Beater Award. This tool started its life in 2009 as the CopyVio hunting Earwig bot. Earwig bot is still up and running, and Earwig's copy bio detector has evolved over the years into a very powerful tool for investigating individual articles that you suspect include copyright violations or plagiarism. To use it in its basic mode, you just enter the article title you want to check and click Submit. After a short wait, you'll get an analysis of which websites have text that most closely matches the article. Some pages like this one, have just a few unlikely matches. Others, like the page for user the earwig's namesake insect, have several very close matches. In this case, we find a few sites that reuse Wikipedia articles content among the top matches, followed by a quote from a popular children's book, followed by a matching sentence from the Tree of Life web project. This one looks like it might actually be a copyright violation, so I'll need to investigate it a bit further. We've been relying on Earwig's copy bio detector for years, and it's done a tremendous amount to keep illegitimately copied content out of Wikipedia. Congratulations to the Earwig and his copy bio detector for winning the Coolest Tool Award. A seguir, menções honrosas. Aqui tem Marinha Ulleik. Mais projetos legais. Or Shandar Pariojnai. Copy Patrol. Nightmare of copyright violations. Thank you for helping to identify recent copy bios on several Wikimedia projects. Many editors are grateful for your existence. MediaWiki CLI is an amazing tool that makes it easy to set up the MediaWiki instance and services for development purposes and to run many integration tools. Nothing would be the same without you. We, the developers of the MediaWiki environment, love you so much. Knowing SparkQL is not the only way to benefit from Wikidata, database of all things in the world. This query allows to query Wikidata by property and property value. It offers autocomplete, Search results show images. Thanks for making things a lot easier with Query. We will announce our next honorable mention by quoting one of its users. The true promise of Wikidata comes from the ability to build a federation of Wikibases all using the same data primitives, and WB Stack is making that promise a reality by letting anyone create a fully functioning Wikibase at the press of a button.
Chegamos ao fim da cerimônia de prêmios. Obrigado a todos que participaram conosco hoje. Obrigado a todos que contribuíram para as ferramentas e a todos que nomearam as ferramentas. Nos vemos ano que vem. Agora,